Hello and welcome back to this video series where we're looking at building an e-commerce platform in 25 days using Next, Netlify and Stripe. So this is where we're up to with our application. Uh, we're able to render our different products on the page and if we click into any of these we can see more information about that particular product. But it doesn't look very nice. We haven't really spent any time making it look pretty. And I guess this is just what the web looked like before CSS <laughs> existed. So we're going to spend some time styling this up. Uh, making it look trustworthy for our consumers, so they actually want to give us some money. Uh, and in order to do that, we're going to use something called Styled Components. So Styled Components is a CSS in JS library, um, so it allows us to write all of our CSS styles uh, in these templated strings, um, and then we can render out our um, styled components. It's going to take a little bit of uh, configuration to get this working in Next.js. That's what we're going to focus on in this video. And in the next one, we're going to look at actually styling our app. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually install the style components library. Um, so yeah, make sure you quit your server if it's still running. And then we're going to install styled-components. So that's all we'd need to install if we were just setting up a regular React app, like using Create React app or something like that. Um, but Next requires us to install a little bit more and add a little bit more configuration. Um, so we need to install a Babel plugin. Um, so this is going to be a dev dependency. Um, so if we do npm i and then dash capital D, that's going to in install a uh, dev dependency, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, and the plugin itself is babel dash plugin dash styled components. Okay, so if you head back over to VS Code and open up a, our package.json file, um, you'll see we've got these dependencies and now we've got dev dependencies as well. So the difference between a dependency and a dev dependency is that dev dependencies are used to uh, build our application or things that we might be doing uh, in our development environment. And then dependencies are used when our application is actually being used in the browser. So this is sort of like at runtime and this is sort of like at build time. So this version of style components, this library style components is going to be used by our application when it's running in our user's browser. Whereas this Babel plugin style components is going to be used um, when Netlify builds a new version of our application to deploy. Okay, so the next thing we need is a Babel uh, configuration file. And we're gonna put that out in the uh, rootmost uh, area of our application. So um, we need to name that dot Babel RC. And then inside here, we're going to have some configuration. Okay, so we're using the next slash Babel preset. And then we're also loading, loading the plugins for style components. And we're giving it uh, the configuration option of server side rendering true. So this is just going to tell Babel, which is one of the tools that's used to build our application, uh, how to build it, um, how to build a static version of this. Um, using server-side rendering. So you don't need to worry too much about this. Just know that we need this configuration file and it needs to be uh, character for character what is on the screen now. And the last thing that we need is a underscore document.js file. So this is similar to our underscore app.js file. So this is a file that already exists in Next.js, um, but declaring this underscore document.js uh, allows us to overwrite the default behavior. So I'm going to just paste in uh, what we need for this file. Um, I'll post a link in the, uh, in the description of this video just so that you can link directly to this in the GitHub repo and just copy it from there. But yeah, we don't, we don't need to understand this again. It's just some configuration that we need to get uh, style components working. So now we can forget all about Babel and we can forget all about underscore document.js files. Uh, and if we head back over to our index.js and scroll back up to the top. Um, so here we have uh, this div that wraps our entire app. And so why don't we look at how we could apply some styles to this div uh, using styled components. So the first thing we do is bring in the styled components library. And then the way that we create a new styled component um, is we declare a new variable. Um, we're going to call this one container because it's going to wrap uh, each of our um, product divs. And then that's going to be equal to calling this styled library um, and telling it what kind of uh, HTML element we actually want to render. So in this case, because we're replacing this div, uh, we say dot div. And so that's going to um, turn into an actual div in the DOM. Uh, and then we use these double backticks. 
And so this is similar to when we were doing string interpolation. Uh, and then anything in here that we, any uh, CSS rules that we write in here are going to be applied to that div as if we had given it a class name um, and declared them in, in a CSS file. So here I'm just gonna set the background color to red to make it uh, very garish and awful and bright. Uh, so we definitely know that it's changed. And then we're going to um, replace this opening div and also this closing div uh, with that component. So we're going to put container with a capital C inside these brackets and inside this closing bracket. Uh, and now this is going to, because this is uh, iterating over each one of our products, um, it's going to uh, make the wrapping div around each one of those components red. So let's have a look at what that looks like in the browser. If we refresh, okay, we haven't got our server running. So if we do npm run dev, and now we have that awful uh, red background color on each of our uh, like product blocks. Okay, so what if we wanted to change the background color for our entire app? So including this, um, this header section here. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of that um, <laughs> background color red just because it, it looks horrible. So if we wanna apply styles to our entire app, so this page component here as well as our navbar, and also it be on every single page, uh, we probably want to put that in our underscore app.js file. Um, so remember that's inside of our pages directory, underscore app.js. Okay, so in here we can import our style components library. And then we can create our new container component. And then rather than rendering uh, this fragment, we can render our container. And then if I save that and head back to uh, our application, we see that background and it's, it's wrapping all the right stuff, but we also have this, this border here, this border of white. And so that's because our browser does some styling by default. And unfortunately, different browsers do different styling <laughs> by default. So things will look slightly different. Um, so we probably want to reset all of that stuff. So we're going to do that by installing another library called uh, styled normalize. And so we can install this from NPM. And then the way that we use it uh, is we import it and then we just render it like we would uh, a regular component. So let's see what that looks like. So now we import that and render that within our container. Okay, cool, so that's got rid of that white border for us, um, but it's also normalized those default styles across all the different browsers. Um, so now this should look pretty consistent across whether we're using it on Chrome or Firefox or Safari or whatever. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to do is bring in uh, a nicer font. So you, you look here, this is uh, probably Times New Roman, something like that, uh, and it doesn't, doesn't look that nice. Um, so we're going to head over to fonts.google.com, and here we can choose a much nicer font. Um, and so I usually like to um, filter this down to probably just sans serif fonts. Um, they're pretty hip, right? Everyone likes a good Roboto or Open Sans. And then usually I just end up scrolling through this for hours and hours and hours and hours trying to find a font that looks nice. Uh, but this time I'm just gonna settle really quickly on this Padok, Paduk, Padauk, I don't know. Uh, this font looks pretty nice. So if we click on that, and then scroll down. Um, so let's say that we want uh, a regular version of this and we also want a bold version of this. And then if we scroll back up here, uh, we can get a link for this. Um, so we can either uh, render this with a link component, which we would want to put in our underscore document.js file because that gives us access to the, to the head component. Um, or we can use import and do this in style components. So I'm gonna copy this import link here. Then I'm gonna go back to our app and here in this style.div, um, I can just put this import statement here. And then underneath this background pink, I'm going to set the font, whoa, family uh, to, and if I head back here, I can get the actual rule. So padauk, uh, 
is in quotes, in single quotes, and then uh, sans serif is a fallback font. So if, if we don't, if we can't load this for whatever reason, uh, it can fall back to sans serif. And now if I save that and head back to our app, we see a much nicer font. Obviously things still look a bit awful with this like purple and underline and all of that stuff, but the font is much better. Okay, awesome. That's everything that I wanted to go through in this video. Uh, in the next one, we will jump into some proper styling and make this look very nice. I'll see you there.